Excuse me, I... <gasps> It's just... okay. I didn't mean to scare you. I'm kind of lost. Well, Silent Hill 2 Remake is getting a lot more information behind it, and now Konami comes out onto Twitter and says, See how blooper team devs still working on Silent Hill 2 preserved authenticity while adapting a horror classic for modern audiences. Anytime you see modern audiences, you know the it's not going to be the same. It's not the game that you're going to remember. It's going to be a completely rewritten, and there there looks like to be a sensitivity uh, consulting behind the new game. So a lot of people are up in arms saying, "Hold on, step back." What have you done to Silent Hill 2? From that park place, Sweet Baby Inc. style consultancy accused of pushing DEI agenda on Konami's Silent Hill 2 remake. Well, before we get fully into the article, do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button today. What's going on here is the trailer has, the new trailer has shown a lot of new details for the game. And one in particular is Angela here, uh, where, she looks like they've fed her a little too much food um from the original look of the way angela is to what this is now is nowhere close to what we even know if we take a good look at the original look of angela here this is a screen grab that i grabbed from the original cutscenes. she she has more defined features where this new version of it, it does not look defined at all. The the new version just makes it look like it's been stretched out and nowhere close to what it what it once was. Following the release of the trailer for, for Konami, Blooper Team's upcoming Silent Hill 2 remake, a Sweet Baby Ink style consultancy called Hit Detection is being accused of pushing the woke DEI agenda on the game. In the trailer released as part of Sony's state of play presentation for May 30th, the character design for of Angela is being criticized for making her face plumper and uglier. We have learning the law coming out here again. In my re restless dreams, I see that town, Silent Hill 2, the modern cheeseburger remake and comparing the two original models for this game. It, it does not look or or feel like the original game uh, in this sense. Now, taking a little bit of a look at the trailer, you can see the scene, and it's nowhere close to what I showed you at the beginning of this video. That the, that was the original cutscene of this scene, and obviously they have better transitions, and you can kind of see more clearly. But if you take the two characters side by side you can see he has well-defined facial features his jacket is well defined everything about him is well defined and then you look at angela and it just she just kind of gets lost completely lost and if you look at the original she was way more well defined in the original game for a cutscene of a playstation one game compared to where we are today i put the fires out you made them worse. Worse? Or better? Now going back to the Konami tweet, a lot of people have legitimate questions here that they would like answers for. Now also talking about that, yes, PlayStation 1 graphics were not revolutionary, not like they are today. Today we have something that's completely different, almost defines a logic in how realistic things can look. But Silent Hill 2, the remake, it, it feels like they put all this effort into the main character and not to the rest of the characters in the game. I've also seen a couple people talk about how they've toned down the nurses in it, toned down the gore a little bit. I it, Well, you, you gotta wait and see and see if it really goes that way. But for the responses here, can you define modern audiences for me? Where are they? Where did you find them? I keep being told things are made for a modern audience but no one is showing up and that's that's everything right now with video games all these remakes the remakes are absolutely atrocious 
Uh, I, I, I just, at this point, I think uh, anyone that's got the IPs, anyone making these remakes should really take a big step back and go, nope, let's stop making remakes. Let's make our original IP. Let's make something new with the IP or make something entirely new. Uh, it, when Whenever you turn around and remake something for modern audiences, it's not going to be faithful to the original storyline or the original look of these games. And then you've got DEI and you have this sort of push into it. And, uh, you know, I got to think back to IGN's tweet over uh, Resident Evil 5, how they're saying that they can't remake uh, remake that game without being racist. And, and you just have to sit there and go, well, why are we even bothering remaking? The remakes are just getting lost at this point. This looks like a nightmare. Well, it kind of is. It is Silent Hill. It, it, Silent Hill is your own nightmare. Is the modern audiences in the room with us now? <laughs> like some of these. I can't wait to not buy this game. It's, yeah, modern audiences, there's that kiss of death. And whenever they say modern audiences, it, 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 it's a new form of saying that we're tailor making this game we're putting in our own self in inserts we're putting in all this all this push in to make it more diverse and more inclusive and yet that's not what people fell in love with the game people love the game because it was a cult classic much like movies like say the crow the new crow movie looks absolutely atrocious compared to the original and yet they're remaking it and there's something about these remakes where they're retelling original stories into a different light that completely tears down the original story and makes it even worse than what it was it doesn't make it better it makes it worse go back the other way here i have a little bit of hope for this game and that being because these are the same developers that created Layers of Fear. A game that I did play through, it, it took me two sessions. We did do the full playthrough of Layers of Fear 1. 2 wasn't as good as 1. I, I kind of fell off on that game. But 1 I thought was a really good version of a... It, it's pretty much a walking simulator. But you do have some choices that you make in the game. And those choices matter on which door you open will give you different events through the game so your playthroughs aren't necessarily going to be the exact same if you want to see that game i have a playlist up on the channel that you can take a look at but they did an interview with dread xp positively spooky bringing the fear interview with anna jasinka is that right because there's a swedish twist on this i believe uh from blooper team uh, one of my first modern uh, horror P games on PC were Layers of Fear in 2016 when I wanted to get back into PC gaming. I loved what was unknown studio. To me, at the time, Blooper Team was capable with the unique ability to shift the environments around the player. Have you seen the story of the dynamics not scene changes that happens had to happen? Like the infamous pyramid head in the kitchen scene. Anna, you see, we are getting into the details, so we'll save your answer for the future. Justin, was the team given free reign to put their own spin on things? Blooper team is amazing at the ability to transform environments around the player, and I'm really hoping we get to see that push to use their for here for the other world. And the other world is Silent Hill has this this world and other world and the other world is like part of the mind being twisted and it's more darker it's like its own hellscape anna as for mention we take a very safe approach to any changes we remain faithful to the original title nonetheless we are applying adjustments to certain areas where things need modernizing due to the passage of time. And that passage of time is where are we today? What has changed in today's society for video games and storytelling? That's the problem. And why the sensitivity readers, the consultancy operations that are out there, why there's a big pushback against them because it's being pushed in such a way that was never needed if this push is retelling stories or redoing stories and changing the narrative of the story based on 
diversity and equity and inclusion. The the DEI, the death kneel of these stories where they just fall off. Stay faithful to the original. If you're going to modernize it, update the graphics, update the game and do that. But don't change the stories. If you're going to expand on certain puzzles, on certain things and make them harder or make them a different puzzle, then that's fine. But when you have to sit there and change the story and flip the script to push in and put someone else on a, up on, on a pillar to remove something else in the game, that doesn't do any good. It doesn't help the game. It doesn't create the game, the sense of the, what people fell in love with at first. Now, like I said, Layers of Fear was an amazing game in my books. It was, it's to this day, one of my favorite um, psychological horror style games out there. And I have hopes that Resident Evil 2 might dive more into that side of things. But anytime they, they put in these details, these little things like the modernization of gaming, it never really tends to spell out very well. Anyway, I'm your proud Canadian Phoenix Cinder Shadow. I'm signing off here. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you again very soon.